Hello, America. Welcome to your Leo Nation, where you know that we believe in the rule of law, a civil society and self-responsibility. I wish I could say that for hmm, a majority of our elected officials, as I like to call them, many of them the elected anarchist and the haters of the rule of law. I um, I saw a headline the other day, and man, oh man, oh man, the intrigue and fun we're going to have with this today. So let me let me just read you real quick. And by the way, did I say this is the chief? I think I did. Chief Mark Garrett. I can't remember. My it's my advanced age. I'm getting a little uh, senile. I should run for president anyway. Um. Take you, take you to the headline here. This is uh, April 21st, so just a little bit ago. Headline, the San Francisco Standard, Gavin Newsom tells San Francisco Police Department to work with the National Guard and the California Highway Patrol against drug crisis. Bring in the National Guard and the CHP, the state police, to the city of San Francisco. That's the headline. Now we're going to come back to this article here in a little bit. But like I said, let me give you some background on this. And we're going to talk about the CHP's involvement in assisting cities throughout the once great state of California. So let's go back real quick to the summer of 2020, the fallout, the aftermath of the George Floyd riots. Our fearless leader, Gavin Newsom, was on a talk show in Los Angeles, and I think this is June 9th, 2020, and the, of course, it was a very soft landing for him. Obviously, it's a radio show, radio station that's very sympathetic to the leans of Gavin Newsom, his policies, and quite frankly, his sustain for law enforcement, and if anybody tells you otherwise they're selling you something when it comes to this governor this man is not a friend of law enforcement he's a back slapping well i'll expand on a description of him later on but let me read just a little excerpt from the transcript i, I printed out from youtube of this appearance he made at this radio station it's a little convoluted well it's convoluted because both the people that are talking, the host and the governor, are morons. Um, not to mention it all kind of runs together in this transcript. So this is the this is a host setting up a question for Newsom, and it goes like this. I'm sure you've seen it is the optimism, I'm reading this verbatim, of the this next generation to see people peacefully protesting in the thousands. It was remarkable just seeing Hollywood Boulevard, seeing San Francisco, seeing all of these different cities peacefully protesting and chanting things of change. So when you see this and when you hear terms like hashtag defund the police, what does that mean to you? Peacefully protesting, right? Burning, looting, assaulting battering, murdering, but it was all peaceful. Here's Newsom's response, and, and trust me, this is all going to come together, and I'm laying the foundation to where or for where we are now. It means we've got to fundamentally change policing in this state, in this nation. It means that we're overly reliant on policing to address social services out on the streets, to address the issues and needs of homeless community folks out there suffering with addictions, people with bipolar disorder, that it's a friend of paranoia, I'm reading this verbatim, people with mental health issues, and, and we're asking the police first approach to solve these problems, but it's not what police should be doing. And so when I hear the word defund, 
I think about those fundamental issues that can radically be changed and I think can be changed by reimagining, again, reimagining policing and not just community policing, the old construct, but something more fund foundational. And that's the process of reform that we're committed to, not just at the state level, but working with local leaders and to ultimately advance one of the things in your new reform. reform. Now, look, I know that a lot of us make fun of Kamala Harris, and rightly so, because she's not quite the wordsmith that a vice president should be. But Gavin Newsom sometimes, sometimes, Gavin Newsom has the ability to speak the ultimate number of words with the minimal level of meaning or function. I'm not sure what he said in there, but I'll, I do know this. He used a, a few words that should indicate to you this man's disdain for law enforcement. One was fundamentally changing. Fundamentally. When you want to fundamentally change something, that means you do not like it, agree with it, support it, believe in it at its core. If you want to fundamentally change your spouse, your life partner, you don't like them. You don't like anything about them if you fundamentally want to change them. I'm not talking about, hey, improving them or suggesting some place or some way they can be a better person. We want to fundamentally change a person, fundamentally want to change anything. That means you have a foundational disagreement with them or with it. The other thing he said near twice, and he emphasized it, was reimagining. Reimagining. When you want to reimagine something, this is a word that the haters of traditional American values, traditional American norms, a civil society, respect of the law, respect for the law, a sense of responsibility. This is the word that they use, reimagining. And this word goes back a long, 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 long way around the world. And now it's being used by the political left in this country and people who hate tra traditional American values and who hate traditional American policing. So I just want to set that stage there for you when we talk about where Gavin Newsom is coming from. Let's move forward just a little bit, shall we? So I pulled up an article. San Francisco's progressive drug policies kill hundreds annually. Now, this was from an article by Lee Ohanian, Ohanian from January 12, 2021. It has a subheadline here. I'll read it to you. Last year, 621 people died of drug overdoses in San Francisco. To put this in perspective, 173 people died from COVID-19, which is identified as the primary public health crisis in the Bay Area. Now, again, folks, this is just over two years or over two years ago, what we're talking about. 621 people dr died of drug overdoses at the same time that 173 people died of COVID. For years, San Francisco has tacitly encouraged drug abuse with remarkably lenient policies. And those policies are now inadvertently killing hundreds of people annually. Now, I agree with some of, a lot of what this author says, but some of his choices of words I disagree with inadvertently. What does one think is going to happen when you encourage drug use by loosening laws, restrictions, by reducing enforcement, by not, by not making it difficult for people to use drugs. What 
do you think is going to happen? What do you think would happen with traffic collisions if you remove the seatbelt law, the car seat law, the speed laws, the driving under the influence? What do you think would happen if you loosen these restrictions? Inadvertently, people died. I would say that's a little bit understated. If you had said, and expectedly, more people died, that would make a lot more sense. Let me continue. San Francisco uses a policy approach called, this is in quotes, harm reduction, which stresses culturally competent, non judgmental treatment that demonstrates respect and dignity for the individual. Are you kidding me? Letting these people, letting these people engage in obvious self harm is not showing respect to the individual. It is showing disrespect. It is showing contempt for the human soul. When a government, a city or county or state or federal government encourages, encourages this type of behavior, you are showing disrespect for your fellow man and woman by letting them engage in behavior that you know is destructive and way too often deadly. You do not care about these individuals. This is what happens. This is what's happening. And this goes back to Newsom and others. I'm going to tie this up. So stay with me. It's so important as we listen to these politicians, as we listen to, unfortunately, sometimes chiefs of police, that we know their respective history. We know their philosophies. It's so important in order to hold them to account. But this approach, as it is practiced within San Francisco, is inhumane and cruel, you think? It is destroying the dignity of the lives that some could have with more sensible policies. In addition to overdose, overdose deaths skyrocketing, drug abuse has increased in San Francisco, and it is becoming more difficult for addicts to affect positive change. Well, of course. I mean, you give an alcoholic a six-pack, do you think their life's going to be more or less difficult? Will they be more or less able to cope with a daily life, hold a job, take care of their family? Hell, not walk out in the middle of the street and get hit by a car. If you spend much time in San Francisco, you know this. As several areas of the city have become de facto open-air drug bazaars, with drug abuse and drug sales taking place for all to see, harm reduction policies are expanding drug use among youths through their dispensation to homeless adolescents of safe snorting kits. I mean, I, I'm, I had to read this twice. They're giving safe snorting kits to young people and safe smoking kits for crack use. As if any crack use could be considered safe. And this should be so obvious to anybody. But I want this to sink in. I'm sitting here gritting my teeth. I want this to sink in that people who hold positions of authority, policymakers, lawmakers, people who ultimately direct the resource of law enforcement are providing deadly drugs, providing deadly paraphernalia, providing the resources and the means by which people ingest, inhale, inject these deadly substances. There are an estimated 25,000 drug users in San Francisco, which if any is too low of a, which if any is too low of a count, since that estimate is nearly two years old. Now this article is two years old, so he's going back to about 2019. And I'm, I'm sure he's right that it's way higher now. This exceeds San Francisco's high school population by more than 50% 
and works out to about 522 drug users per city block. I can't imagine 522 people walking down the street, 522 drug users per city block. You know, San Francisco is not a large city geographically. Can you imagine the concentration of this type of behavior in the open public? What a disgrace. What a disgrace. Sadly, thousands of human tragedies unfold every day eviscerating those who use drugs and forever affecting the lives of those who see it daily, including many children. Drug use is, a cha is challenging to treat, but a recent handbook of best practices for substance abuse treatment by the Department of Health and Human Services shows that targeted treatment can be very effective, particularly when intervention occurs early. Well, that makes sense. But again, the same city that's now trying to pee in the fire is itself the arsonist. They started this, and now they're, they're looking for social programs to mitigate the problem that they started. And we can go on and on and on about the obvious stuff. Let me skip down here a little bit. By normalizing drug abuse, San Francisco has created a perfect storm of a vibrant, well-functioning market of buyers and sellers who trade drugs much like a basket of fruit is traded at a farmer's market. Unfortunately, the basket that is being traded in San Francisco's drug bazaar is increasingly becoming the opioid fentanyl, which can be 100 times more powerful than more morphine. And I'm gonna tie this into a, a little bit, a later article. But the reason I skipped a bunch of this is because we often hear, oh, well, you know, Self drug use, or I guess that's redundant. Drug use is a victimless crime. It's not going to hurt anybody else. These people are so moronic. These people are so at odds with logic, reality, honesty, the truth. Anybody, a 10 year old, could figure out that if drugs cost money and you have more and more of it, that means more and more people are selling drugs. The drug business is deep, deep into the business of death through drug tra trafficking, drug sales, mules, wars. It goes beyond the already sad story about these poor souls that are using these substances to kill themselves and the very, very least turn themselves into zombies or ruin their lives. The idea that, that drug use doesn't affect anybody else is just a lie. It's just a lie. Fentanyl is sufficiently strong that much less than one milligram is used as a general anesthesia during major sur surgery. Just two milligrams, the equivalent of about 25 grains of sand can be lethal. Emergency personnel responding to fentanyl overdose, to a fentanyl overdose, must take precautions so they do not accidentally inhale a fentanyl. And yet fentanyl is now being widely traded every day in San Francisco, driving up overdose deaths to about two daily. Now, again, this is two years ago. I'm sure it's higher than that. What to do? Drug addiction can be treated medically and compassionately without viewing it as part of a normal everyday life, and so forth and so on. And he goes on to talk about some of the mitigating factors and services that they have. And we all get that. Look, whatever people we can help through programs, absolutely I want them help. But again, we have to go back to where did this all start? And this brings me to. Back to our headline that I started with as I drink my water from my Your Leo Nation mug. Now, remind you, Gavin Newsom tells San Francisco Police Department to work with National Guard and the CHP, California Highway Patrol, against drug crisis. Now, remember, the reason I opened with that transcript, with that uh, radio show from three years ago 
was because Newsom was talking about how he had to fundamentally change law enforcement and the way law enforcement works. We have to reimagine law enforcement. So let me read this article to you. Again, this is by Joe Byrne, April 21st, 2023, the San Francisco Standard. Gavin Newsom announced Friday that San Francisco police and district attorney Brooke Jenkins have been told to tap California Highway Patrol and National Guard resources to battle the city's drug crisis. Boy, and here comes a short paragraph that my blood boils. This is a quote from Newsom. Two truths can coexist at the same time. San Francisco's violent crime rate is below, is below comparably sized cities like Jacksonville and Fort Worth. And there's also more we must do to address public safety concerns, especially the fentanyl crisis, Newsom said. Let me back up a little bit. The reason I'm going here, folks, is because not people like Gavin Newsom, but Gavin Newsom specifically, along with others, George Gascone, who's now in Los Angeles County, destroying that county like he did San Francisco with the police department and later as DA, Gavin Newsom, and a myriad of other clowns and haters of the rule of law are responsible they are responsible for the mass death that we are witnessing, not only in San Francisco, but other parts of the state. Gavin Newsom was one time mayor of that city. And Gavin Newsom didn't do anything at the time to slow down the expanding rate of drug use in that city. And since he's left there, all he's done is talk out of both sides, actually four sides of his mouth, about why law enforcement is a problem, why law enforcement has to be reimagined, why law enforcement is, is, is primarily focusing on, on persons of color and underrepresented groups in the society. This man has never done anything to promote and support the women men and women of law enforcement in their effort to reduce the amount of drug use, to get these people, quite frankly, sometimes in county jail and those that are pushing drug sales or pushing drugs into state prison. He wants to talk about how law enforcement has to be reimagined. How, imagine this. How about we put more criminals in prison into the court systems to get them locked up and off the street. Those people we can save, those people are true addicts and have done nothing else, I put that in quotes, but have done nothing else to harm anybody in society, get them help. But let me go back to this quote here about, about San Francisco's crime rate is below Jacksonville and Fort Worth. Listen, how many of you listening have kids, right? And your kid gets caught doing something wrong. I got a nine-year-old. I can speak from a position of intelligence and experience with this. What do we teach our kids? If you did something wrong, you own up to it. You fix the problem. You make amends. You get punished. You straight up and fly right. You do it correctly the next time. You don't do it again. What does Newsom say? Well. San Francisco may be a total S show, but guess what? Jacksonville, Florida, and Fort Worth, Texas, man, they're worse than we are. This man acts like a child. A child. My kid's nine years old. He wouldn't say this. He knows better. If he'd done something wrong, I ask him. And thank goodness he tells me the truth. Yeah, dad, I did it. Okay, and we fixed the problem, whatever that means. But he doesn't say, well, I did it, but so-and-so did it too. Or 
somebody else did it too. No, he knows that doesn't work with me as mom. But Gavin Newsom doesn't know that. He is an immature child instead of taking responsibility for the mess, the disaster that he is partly responsible for. What does he do? He turns around and points the finger at other cities across the U.S., but it gets even better, folks. It gets even better. Do you think he chose Jacksonville, Florida, and Fort Worth, Texas, by chance? He didn't say, well, we're not as bad as Detroit. We're not as bad as Baltimore. We're not as bad as Chicago. We're not as bad as XYZ, XYZ, XYZ. He could have any number of cities that he could, he could point out where San Francisco may not be doing this poorly, but he picked out Jacksonville and Fort Worth. Why? Because this man, I think he identifies as a man, I'm not sure. This man wants to run for president because he thinks that the wonderful job he has done with keeping people safe in California is going to translate to a landslide victory in 2024. That's what this guy thinks. He's delusional. He thinks people are stupid enough, are dumb enough to not see what he's done with specific cities in this, in this state, namely San Francisco, because that's his home base, and what he's done in general throughout the state, the policies that he supports. He thinks that we in California and people in general across this country are stupid enough, stupid enough to actually support him for president. Oh, God, I hope that that's not right. I pray that the electorate is not that gullible, not that ignorant, and not that blind. But that's why he picked those cities. So then he goes on to say that, yes, there's more we need to, to do to address concerns, especially the fentanyl crisis. Let me move on with this article. The announcement directs the four agencies... Remember, that's the DA, San Francisco PD, the National Guard, and California Highway Patrol to figure out a path to work together to better deal with San Francisco's open drug dealing scene in the Tenderloin neighborhood and other areas of the city. The National Guard will identify specialist personnel and resources to support the analysis of drug trafficking operate. The analysis? The article from two years ago just tells you there's like 500 plus in every, every, uh, every block. You walk outside, or there's your analysis anyway, with a particular focus on disrupting and dismantling fentanyl trafficking rings. Newsom, oh boy, lost my place here. Newsom has told CHP to find ways to assist San Francisco police, including through the assignment of CHP personnel and resources to assist cops in combating the fentanyl crisis through technical assistance, training, and drug trafficking enforcement within key areas of the city. Now, let me tell you why he's calling in the California Highway Patrol from a practical point of view. The Highway Patrol has a long and great history of assisting local law enforcement agencies when it comes to crime problems. And probably the, the most well-known within the department and, and, and government here in California is the story of East Palo Alto in California, obviously. Palo Alto and East Palo Alto. For those of you who may not be familiar, Palo Alto is the home of Stanford University an extremely affluent community in the Bay Area, kind of between San Jose and San Francisco. Well, then there's East Palo Alto. I can tell you that there is no relationship between the two cities, no comparison. East Palo Alto back in the late 80s, early 90s, if I remember correctly, if not one of the highest, but I do believe it was the highest per capita murder rate in the country at the time. If not the one, it was very, very high. East Palo Alto PD could not handle the crime problem. So who do they call? They called the California Highway Patrol to come in. The CHP came in 
And we, I wasn't there in East Palo Alto, but I was in the department near the end of this partnership. The California Highway Patrol went in there and cleaned up East Palo Alto. I'm not sure where East Palo Alto is right now in crime stats. The Highway Patrol, when they went in there, they did their job and they brought the crime to a halt for all intent and purposes. So this is why Newsom wants to use the CHP because he knows the California Highway Patrol goes in and kicks butt and gets the job done. I'll continue. The Cal Guard is seen significant success supporting multi-agency task forces interdicting fentanyl across our state, said Major General Matthew P. Beavers of the California National Guard. We expect to achieve the same success working with our partners in San Francisco. The San Francisco Police Department has been working hard to stop drug, drug trafficking by making countless arrests and narcotics, narcotic seizures, San Francisco Police Chief Bill Scott said. In the interest of full disclosure, I know Bill Scott very well. We worked together when he was with LAPD and I was with the CHP working in his LAPD division. A good man. I'm not sure what pressure Bill Scott's under in San Francisco, but I can tell you he doesn't get a lot of political support. And this man is working with a, a workforce about 25% lower than its prescribed levels, a daunting task, to put it mildly. Despite our ongoing work in close collaboration with the district attorney, the fentanyl crisis has contributed to hundreds of drug overdose-related deaths. It's actually thousands and thousands now. And this is just a, this article, again, it's just, it's just a few days old. Bill and this spoke there, it gives us thousands of deaths. Jenkins said the new resources will help the city's ability to fight crime and prosecute suspected drug dealers and traffickers. Didn't we talk about this earlier, that drug use is not a victimless crime? They need law enforcement to come in and prosecute suspected drug dealers and traffickers. Get this, the cavalry is coming tweeted San Francisco Supervisor Matt Dorsey, a former police communications executive, in reactions to Newsom's, Fri Newsom's Friday announcement. Now, Newsom, Matt Dorsey, I, I don't know for a fact about Matt Dorsey. I don't know who this guy is. He's a Democrat in San Francisco. I'm, I'm going to guess what his philosophies about law enforcement are. But just a few years ago, even a couple years ago, Everybody was on the bandwagon, right? Everybody. Whether it was you picked the corporation, you picked the elected official from the left, that is, and everybody's talking about reimagining, defunding, so forth and so on, law enforcement. Now, all of a sudden, coming from Matt Dorsey, San Francisco supervisor, now the Calvary is coming with the California Highway Patrol. Now we need law enforcement. Now we need people to be handcuffed. Now we need people to be taken off the street. Now we need the laws to be enforced. The laws that you have circumvented, have ignored, have erased, have minimized, have labeled as racist. Now you want the cops to come in and clean up the pile of fecal matter that you are partly responsible for. Where were you, Matt Dorsey? Where were you three years ago when the crap hit the fan and people are talking about defunding them? Were you there then saying, don't defund the police? Don't do that. We need cops here to keep the bad guys off the street to ensure that people can walk down the street without any reasonable fear of being assaulted or robbed or beaten or stabbed like that executive was a couple of weeks ago. Where were you then? Where were you then, Governor Newsom? Were you out there saying, no, don't defund the police? That's the wrong tactic. Where were you, Newsom? And now that you want to run for president, now you're going to start trying to polish the turd that you laid on this state. You are a disgrace. 
you are a disgrace now. You always have been a disgrace in public life. If you had any shame, you would be ashamed, but you don't, so you're not. Calls were growing on Thursday for CHP to step in to help local law enforcement battle the fentanyl crisis as the police department struggles with its own staffing woes. Since 2019, more than 2,000 people in the city have died from fentanyl overdoses. This actually corrects what Bill Scott said earlier in the, in the uh, article about just hundreds. 2,000 people since 2019 have died from fentanyl overdoses. The crisis has sparked regular debate over establishing safe drug uses in San Francisco, drug use sites in San Francisco, that backers say prevent overdose deaths, but opponents say sanction illegal behavior. You think they sanction? What do you mean? They say it sanctions illegal. It, as far as I know, as far as I know, that drug possession is still a crime on the books in California. I believe it is. It's 11350, the Health and Safety Code. If nothing's changed in the two, two and a half years since I retired, what do you mean they say it sanctions illegal behavior? Of course it sanctions illegal behavior. This is the problem. It only sanctions it. It encourages illegal behavior, just like allowing people to smoke pot. All of this encourages illegal behavior. Actually, in that case, it made it legal. And it encourages more behavior of that type. Newsom made a surprise visit to the Tenderloin. Oh, joy. Thank God Newsom came to the Tenderloin District on Wednesday to see San Francisco's fentanyl crisis firsthand, but made no public remarks. I wonder why. The governor was flanked by Attorney General Rob Bonta, another loser, and Mayor London Breeds. By the way, for those of you who say, hey, Mayor London Breeds coming around and she's pushing him back on defund the police. I don't give a damn. That's fine. That's fine that she's pushing back on defunding the police now. Where was she three years ago? Did she get in front? Did she show courage then to stop that, that ridiculous movement? No. But now she has to live in the mess that she's partly responsible for. So I give her absolutely no props. She's... She's doing now what she should have been doing the whole time. But if you're part of the initial problem and you come back now and try to clean it up, I say, so what? Big deal. That's not leadership. That's following. That's following. Now you're asking for help because the crisis has gotten even worse than you thought it would based on your idiotic philosophies and your lack of courage during the time you should have been standing up and saying that defunding the police in any form whatsoever is ridiculous. Breed said on Friday on Twitter that San Francisco Police Department and Jenkins have been partnering to increase enforcement, but our local agencies can use the support in their work to help make a difference in our city. Well, won't that be wonderful? I hope they do. She said Newsom, she thanked Newsom for his critical support to help break up open air drug dealing in San Francisco. These people should be embarrassed, but they're not. Get this, State Senator Scott Weiner. Democrat San Francisco issued a statement Friday afternoon saying he welcomes the coordinated effort to disrupt drug markets in San Francisco. However, he also noted that Newsom vetoed his legislation to create a pilot program for safe consumption sites in San Francisco. So at the same time, this guy, the state Senator Weiner, is saying, oh, yeah, great, bring in law enforcement. He wants to continue making it easier for people to use illegal drugs in public. He wants more, quote unquote, safe consumption sites. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine, say, listen, we're going to give you all the heroin or methamphetamine or you name it, but you have to take it safely. You, you, you just can't make this up. It's like bizarro land. These people are delusional. San Francisco's police department has 335 fewer full-duty police officer, officers than it did in 2017, with a total of 1,537 officers as of January, according to Dorsey. A police staffing 
analysis indicated the department needs upward of 2,100 sworn officers to satisfy city demands. And finally, it talks about the CHP has been deployed into crime hotspots by the governor before in 2021. Newsom deployed CHP officers into Oakland to supplement city police patrols in high crime areas of the city after then Mayor Libby Schaff requested it. In 2007, Schwarzenegger did the same thing for an anti gang task force in Oakland. So it just goes back to my talking about the CHP's history and going in and cleaning up other people's messes. The irony on this, folks, is that the people coming with the fire hoses, supposedly, are the same ones who were dismantling the fire department, so to speak, three years ago. In other words, these people are the arsonists, and now they're coming with the buckets of water, and they have no shame. Not one of these people have come out and said, you know what? I should have been forceful in my opposition to the defund the police movement three years ago, but I didn't do the right thing. See, that I could live with. That I could say, you know what? Okay, all right, that's fine. You admitted it, you're part of the problem. Now we can work together. But now they're talking about this as if they are a savior. So they have this bright idea to bring cops into a city where cops have been vilified. Ladies and gentlemen, we who love the freedoms that we have in this country must pay attention to the track records of these used car salesmen in suits. We have to know what we're dealing with. We have to understand that so many of these people are only out for themselves. They're out for power. They are part of the mob. They are not leaders. They are followers. They are instigators in the unraveling of our once great society. Look, this is not a fentanyl crisis in San Francisco. It is a law enforcement crisis. It is a leadership crisis. What about the sex trafficking, the assaults, the auto burglaries, the larceny, the murder, the organized retail theft, all of those things have accelerated greatly in San Francisco and across the state since and before, but certainly since the summer of 2020. All of these things have increased. It's not a fentanyl crisis. That is a crisis itself. But that is just a part of the real crisis. It's a crisis of enforcing our border. It's, an, it's a, a crisis, I should say, a crisis of not enforcing our border. It's a crisis of not enforcing our laws. It's a crisis of people not adhering to the rule of law. And I mean individuals. And the reason they're doing that is because law enforcement has gone soft either by lack of resources or by their leadership or both. Think about what's happened to San Francisco the last few years. Whole Foods, Target, so many other retailers out there. Do you think they don't want to make money? Do you think they don't want to sell their products? They left because people like Gavin Newsom and London Breed and and and. George Gascone and so many other elected officials have made the environment untenable for business and individuals. Why do you think we've had 500,000 Californians flee this once great state to other states? Why? Because the weather's not good here? Mm, No, that's not the problem. The problem is the people in positions of power, authority decision makers. That's why they've left. These people are crapping on this state. They're crapping on the country in so many places. And Newsom wants to crap as much as he can in this country by winning the presidency in 2024. I think that is at best a pipe dream. Hope I'm right. We'll see.
folks, I, I get passionate about this. And when I talk about, you know, this being a podcast about law enforcement, the subject nowadays is so huge. I'm going to stay on some of these, these overriding large topics because it, it goes all the way down to the patrol officer. These topics, these individuals, they affect that guy, that gal that want to come help you, that want to prevent something bad from happening, that want to get the impaired driver off the highway. These policies, these philosophies, these disregards for the Constitution, the rule of law, civil society, self-responsibility, these things affect each and every one of us. I've said it before, I'll say it again. This is a nation of laws. It was conceived and it was formed as a nation of laws. And if we continue to denigrate the people who enforce those laws, we will become a nation of chaos. Do your part not to let that happen. Don't forget, we want to help those who are helping us get to your Leo project, our, non, our nonprofit partner. Send whatever you can, folks. I implore you. Send, send five bucks, send 50, send $5,000. Take the tax fraud off. Let us help those who are helping us. I mean that passionately. And with that, God bless you. God bless America. Hang in there. Keep up the good fight. And push back, push back against these people.